We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a do it yourself blog, YouTube channel, and podcast that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 105 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. And I have to admit, I almost skipped this week's episode. <laughs> Not because I was having a tantrum. It's been a really busy weekend. And sometimes when things get busy, I will say to myself, well, I can do the podcast. Instead of Friday, I'll do it on Saturday. And then Saturday comes and you're busy and you're like, well, I'll do it on Sunday. (laughs) So tonight I was so close to just saying, well, I'll do it tomorrow. And then I realized you're expecting an episode and this is what I do. So I showed up. I'm in my pajamas, I'm in my shed, (laughs) and this episode hopefully is not going to be too echoey. I've got this little piece of cardboard, well, not even cardboard, it's like paper, cardboard paper, like, I don't know, surrounding my computer trying to keep some of the vibrations and reverberation, I think is what I'm looking for, out of the podcast. But I'm here in my shed, I'm recording in my shed now. And there's so much open space in here that my voice is just echoing. So I apologize for that. But welcome to episode 105. I'm so excited that you showed up because I showed up and we're going to talk about how do you remove rust from metal furniture? Can you paint over rust? And the reason why we're talking about this is because I've got these two amazing, and I say they're amazing, they're pretty ugly when you see them, but I've got these two amazing metal cabinets that I got from an well, I was going to say an estate sale, but it was actually an online auction. I keep wanting to say estate sale, but sometimes I do do online um, auctions. If you live in the Maryland, D.C. metropolitan area, there's a really great site called, I think it's called McGuire's. I will have to look it up, but someone had put me onto it about a year ago, maybe about a year and a half ago. And every now and then I see that they've got a new uh, auction going on and i will bid on some things. And I've gotten some really cool things from there, including these two metal cabinets. And it looks like it was a high school, maybe they were going to tear it down, rebuild, and they were just getting rid of everything. I mean, even the chalkboards on the walls, they were getting rid of everything. And I saw these two metal cabinets. They weren't tall. They're, you know, probably short enough to fit underneath of my desk, which is where I'm going to probably put them. And They were just gorgeous. I love anything with lots of drawers. I love metal, even though I planned to paint this because they were covered in rust. Um, But I love anything that's like a metal vintage-y cabinet. It just, I don't know, it just makes me think of all the things that I can fill it with, right? (laughs) Little odds and ends and screws and, you know, washers and all these little things that you don't really know where to keep. Well, They were sitting in my garage for a while. They already had rust on them, but I knew that I could remove the rust, paint them. I just didn't know where I wanted to put them. And I think at the time, I don't, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if I even had my shed at the time that I bought these online, you know, that I won the auction. I don't think I even had this shed, but I knew that this project was going to come at the right time. I'm sitting in here in my shed and I've got these two Ikea desks. I I don't think I've shared this online yet. So if you follow me on social media, I'm sure you haven't seen it because I've been trying to keep it under wraps. But (laughs) last two, well, two weeks ago, maybe it's been three weeks, maybe two weeks, I went looking for a desk because my she shed, the interior is pretty much finished in terms, you know, the drywall's done, the floor's done. And the only thing I needed left is well, I need a lot of things, but the most important thing I needed in order to get in here and start using the space was a desk. So I went to the thrift stores, didn't find anything that was really affordable, not really what I was looking for. And I said, well, let me just go to Ikea. I'll go there and see what I can find. And saw a couple of things that could have worked, but it was still a little bit too expensive. I mean, I know Ikea is not expensive, but keep in mind here, thrift diving is really you know, for me, it's all about how can I, how cheap can I get this and can it fit my needs? Can I paint it and turn it into what I need it to be? 
Well, and I may have told you this story. If I did, I'm so sorry. So I will skip through some of those parts. But basically, I found two perfect desks. And the way that I have them arranged is is sort of like an L shape. And it's perfect. Like lots of space to stretch out. And I need something to go underneath. I needed some metal cabinets to go underneath. And these aren't full metal cabinets, right? Like I can't put hanging file folders in these cabinets. It's really probably, you know, maybe I could probably put a sheet of paper in there. It's probably wide enough for that. But really, it's just for odds and ends. And, you know, there's one, two, three. I'm looking at them now. One, two, three, four, five. Each of them have six doors. So there's like, I think there's six drawers. So there's like 12 drawers of space that I cannot wait to put things in. The only problem is that when you see these metal drawers or these metal cabinets, they've got some rust on them. And on the sides closer to the bottom, maybe as I don't know, they might've been sitting in some water in one of these classrooms, or maybe it had just been a really damp environment, but the uh, bottoms of these cabinets were really rusty. And there was just some, just a lot of surface imperfections. And you can tell that there were pieces that were attached to these metal cabinets that have long since been removed. So there's all these little holes all over the cabinets. So I decided in the last week, I'm going to tackle this project. And I wanted to talk to you and just kind of share some tips with you on what to do if you've got a metal cabinet or even just outdoor furniture, something that's metal that's got rust on it. How do you proceed with painting over this? And I have to tell you that I, I wish that I didn't have to paint these metal cabinets because I think there's something so fun about vintage cabinets that just look vintage, right? I mean, I do love metal cabinets that have bright, fun colors. That is fun, but there's just something about vintage cabinets, especially if they're in really good condition, that I just love. And I like to keep them in the original form. In fact, <laughs> several years ago, now I don't know if you, you knew this, but back in 2017 or so, I had done a little bit of modeling with Duluth Trading Company. And they had invited me up to, I believe it was Minnesota, and for a shoot at that time. And I don't do anything with them now. I think they rotate their models every so often, or they call them the, their Duluth women. Well, I had gone to Minnesota and there was this amazing, I mean, this is where we were shooting. This is part of my scene that I was shooting. We were in a uh, salvage shop and I saw this metal cabinet that just Oh, it was just amazing. I just loved it. It was it was in pretty good condition, but it was still kind of beat up a little. And it had all these little drawers and I had to buy it. <laughs> now, the thing is, I live in Maryland. This is Minnesota. How am I going to get this thing? I can't take it on the plane. Well, this company actually shipped it to me. And I think I may have even paid like $150 to ship this thing. It was it's pretty heavy, but I just loved it so much. And it's in my garage. I still have it in there. And that one I didn't paint. It doesn't have rust and a lot of surface marks or, you know, scratches on it or whatever. But I really liked it in its original condition. So if I can get a metal cabinet and keep it in its original condition, I would love to do that. But the ones that you're going to see probably this week on my YouTube channel, on the blog, thriftdiving.com, there was just no way that I could leave those natural. I just couldn't. And I did think that maybe I could have stripped them like back to their original metal or not the original metal, but like down to the bare metal. I think that would have been great. But here in my she shed, if you've seen the interior, you know that I've, I've got little pops of color. <laughs> Several months ago, I did these amazing blinds and I just used regular roller blinds from Walmart and I did my own fabric over top, really just needed the hardware. So now I've got roll-up blinds that I custom made for my shed. And what's, what's really interesting is that people think that they're paintings, like when they see them and they don't realize that I'd done that project, when they see it, they're like, oh, I love those paintings that you, that painting you have on the wall. And I'm like, oh no, that's, that's actually my window blind. <laughs> Just pulled down all the way. But it's got these vibrant colors and it's got like gold and fuchsia, purple. And, and so I'm trying to bring just bold colors into my shed without having to paint the walls. I'm going to keep the walls nice and bright and white, but I want to bring color into this space. And the Ikea desk that I have, it's like, what do you call it? The melanin 
top and it's very smooth and it's just white. So it kind of blends into the wall. And oh, if you saw, actually, you know what? I think I may have posted the before. Yeah, I did. Over on Instagram, you can find me at Thrift Diving. And I did ask people, and I think I asked on Facebook too, what color would you paint these cabinets? <laughs> I didn't know what color I was going to go with. I didn't even know what colors I had in my stash. Now, if you remember from a couple episodes ago, actually it might have been last episode. Remember we did this 30-day DIY money makeover challenge and it was a success, right? I'm, I'm focused on what I'm spending my money on. I'm trying not to buy excess supplies, things that I don't need that are just going to like collect dust throughout the entire year. So when I had these cabinets here in my shed, I thought, let me ask people what they think. And then based on what they say, I will take their considerations or I will consider their suggestions and then I'll see what I have in my stash. I don't want to go out and buy new paint colors. So I kept getting the same color from people, not Everybody said red, but there was a lot of people that's like, oh, you should do a red. That would be great. And I thought, you know, red would be, red would be awesome. Well, I didn't actually have any red furniture paint, but I did have cranberry. So it, it looks red, but it's, it's kind of like a pinkish, but it is like a deeper red, slight pinkish, but more, I guess, cranberry. That's what it's called. Cranberry. And it's looking fantastic. Now, the only thing is, is before I could actually paint it, I had to go through a lot of processes in order to get this paintable, right? Because you might be wondering, well, can you even paint over rust? And you'll see in the before pictures when I post this on my YouTube channel and on the blog, how much rust, and it was a pretty deep rust, but well, when I say deep, it looked more prominent at the bottom of the cabinets, but the rust was only on the surface. And that's one thing you have to keep in mind. If you're painting over rust and that rust is gone all the way through that metal, that's going to be kind of difficult to paint over. Like you're not going to prevent the rust from continuing to eat through that metal. So if you've got a surface rust and you take a steel brush and you've kind of brushed away some of those, those rust flakes and you can see, oh, this is just on the surface, then that's good news. That means that you can paint over that. But here's what you have to do first. And there's a couple products that I really, really love. One that I love more than the other. And the first one that I love, it's called Metal Rescue. It's a rust remover gel. This company had actually reached out to me, gosh, it could have been maybe three years ago. And they said, hey, we want you to try this product. And I said, okay, you know, as a blogger, as a YouTuber, we get offered products all the time to test out. And this is one that I really, really liked. And I did use this on another project. If you remember several years ago, I did a, I think it was a TV cart. I turned it into like a bar cart, but I think it was like a TV stand or maybe an old, old bar cart or whatever it was, but I turned it into like a pretty bar cart. Well, there was some rust on the metal legs of that. And what I did with this metal rescue uh, rust remover gel is I slathered it on the metal. And then according to their instructions, you just wrap it up in some ceram wrap and let it sit. And you know you can kind of leave it there all day if you want to. You could probably even leave it overnight, especially if you've got a lot of rust. This bar cart didn't have a lot of rust. But one thing that was amazing is once you started to just take a cloth and wipe away that metal, I mean, it just improved the metal appearance, all that rust just started coming off. It was amazing. It was amazing. So that's the product that I really, really like just because once you wrap it, you can leave it, go to the store, maybe leave it overnight, come back and work on the project the next day, let it do its job. The other product that I actually used for these metal cabinets, and I don't like it as much because this one, the instructions tell you, don't let it dry. And I know why it tells you that, <laughs> because once you leave it on there and it starts to dry, it starts to actually strip away any kind of coating that's on that metal. Um, like if there is a little bit of paint, it just starts to strip it all away. And I don't think the Metal Rescue Rust Remover Gel, the first one that I told you about, I don't think it does that. But this one is by 
Rust. This other one is by Rust Oleum, and you can get it at Home Depot. You can probably, well, I don't think you can get it at Lowe's. I think Rust Oleum might just be like a Home Depot exclusive brand, but you can get it there. And this is just called Rust Dissolver. It's a gel formula. And it says that it works fast. So 30 minutes, you spray it on, it clings to the surface, and it says it works fast. And what it does is, is it inhibits rust. That's what these rust removers do. It, or it dissolves the rust, it inhibits it from continuing. And the only thing about this product that I didn't like is that it tells you not to leave it dry. So, you know, actually what happened to me is after I put <laughs> the rust remover gel on there, well, the rust dissolver, I'll call it the rust dissolver. After I put the rust dissolver on there, then my kids had come home from school. I went inside, started talking to them and I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta get back out there. And so I rushed back and I'm hoping that it's not dry because what happens with this rust dissolver from Rust-Oleum, if you let it dry, like I said, it starts to remove the finish and you, you may not actually wanna remove all the finish, you may just wanna remove the rust. And I actually used it for another project that I did here in the shed. And it ended up removing a lot of the finish. I mean, yeah, it removed the rust, but it removed a lot of the finish and I kind of didn't like that. So I'm not sure if the first one that I told you about, the Metal Rescue, removes the finish or just the rust. I really wanna do a comparison of the two. Actually, that would be a great video, <laughs> is to compare those two rust removers to see which one works better and under which conditions, right? Like. You know, can you leave this one for a while or how soon does it dry out? That's a great idea. I need to write that down. So I like that idea. But anyway, I didn't have the rest, the metal rescue. I, I thought that I bought it, but you know, when you buy a lot of materials and you stash them in places and then you're like, where did I put that thing that I bought six months ago that I knew I was going to need today? <laughs> I don't know, but I did have a bottle of the rust dissolver. I just used that. It worked pretty well. It did work pretty well. Again, I didn't like that it dries on me. And I wonder if I could have wrapped that one in Ceram Wrap. Maybe, maybe, maybe next time I'll have to give that a try. But it did what it was supposed to do. It removed the rust. And here's the thing, when you're removing the rust from metal, you then have to use a primer, but you don't wanna use just a regular primer. Because if you go to like, let's say Home Depot, there's, regular primer, but then there's one, and I'm just gonna say Rust-Oleum because that's the one that I'm familiar with and that's what I have in front of me. And <laughs> that's the one I'm gonna talk about. So they actually have two types of uh, metal primer, okay? So you have to look for the one that says ru stops rust. So it's Rust-Oleum, but it says stops rust. And there's two that stops the rust. There's a clean metal primer, and then there's a dirty metal primer. Now the clean metal primer is if you have just a little bit of light rust, kind of like these metal cabinets. It was a little heavier at the bottom, but still, even after I removed it, I would say it was still pretty light. But if you've got a piece of furniture or a piece of metal, maybe outdoor furniture that you're painting and it's got a lot of rust and you're removing as much as you can, but you still can't really get all of it off, but you've, you've done the entire process to inhibit it, right? You've put on the rust dissolver, you've wiped it down, cleaned it down, and you still have kind of like a heavy rust, then you wanna use the dirty metal primer. And that's gonna to help to in further inhibit that rust so that it doesn't continue to keep rusting. And if it does, or let's just put it this way, if you don't remove all the rust and or you don't inhibit it, what's gonna happen is once you paint over it, then that paint's just gonna flake off, right? Because you, you still have rust there, you're not inhibiting the rust. So make sure that you are dissolving the rust with the metal, um, not the metal, the metal rescue or the rust dissolver. And I will have links down below in the show notes where you can see the links for those. You can probably just get them on Amazon. So use that for step one. Step two, use the metal primer. So either a clean metal primer or a dirty metal primer. And then once that dries, you can go over it with whatever paint that you want. Now, if it's something that's going outside, like outdoor furniture, then there are some, some paints that are specifically for metal that Rust-Oleum makes. I would recommend just kind of stay in that brand. But 
these are just going to be indoors, these metal cabinets right underneath of my desk. And I'm actually using, gosh, what is the name of that brand of paint? I can't see it all the way across the room, <laughs> but it's a furniture paint. It has a top coat built into it and it's coming out really, really great. So I've painted one already, but here's part of the problem because remember I told you in the beginning that these metal cabinets, they must have had little attachments or certain things on them that over the years, wherever they were at this high school, I don't know, they just got beat up. Maybe little brackets were on there that were just removed. They had handles. They all had handles, but there was a lot of little holes. And when I painted over one of the cabinets, I thought, you know what? I don't really care about the holes. I'm just going to paint over it. Let's just see how it goes. And I did three coats, three coats. Normally I'll do two, but because the primer underneath was white, and this is another thing that you'll, you'll realize too, as you paint furniture, if you have a white primer and they actually might even make a gray primer, um, for in the clean metal primer. So keep that in mind too. If you're doing, let me just back this up in case you missed this. If you are doing a dark color on your metal, then go with a dark colored primer and it'll be gray, but that way when you're using two coats, you don't see that primer coming through. But because I used white, and in fact, I don't think Home Depot even had any other primer. They only had the clean metal primer in white. So that's what I went with. And even at that time, I don't think I even knew what color I was going to paint it. Was I going to go like light pink? Was I going to go the cranberry, hot pink? I didn't even know. But I ended up going with the cranberry. It's a little darker. So because of that, I had to use three coats of paint just to cover up that white primer that was underneath. So once I painted it, I looked at the holes. I'm like, yeah, that's not really looking too good, Serena. Like, I don't want to see the holes on there. Now, if this was wood, I would just get some wood filler, fill those holes, let the wood filler dry and then sand it smooth and paint over it, right? That's, that's what we would do. But because it's metal, you can't use wood filler on metal. So I went to Ace Hardware. I just happened to be going to Whole Foods yesterday and I thought, well, let me just go into Ace Hardware. It's here. First of all, let me tell you, I freaking love Ace Hardware and I don't go in there very often because it's just not as close to my house. And I mean, we always think of the, the big stores, right? Home Depot and Lowe's. But if you have an Ace Hardware near you, I wholeheartedly support shopping at your local Ace Hardware because they are independently owned and you are supporting local business. But as soon as I worked, walked in, literally within 10 seconds, there was somebody there that was like, oh, can I help you find anything? <laughs> and at that time, I didn't even realize what I was looking for. I was like, oh, I'm just kind of browsing. And then within just a few other minutes, actually not even a few minutes, it was probably like 60 seconds, I found another employee who was stocking the shelf. And I said to him, hey, I'm looking for something to fill these holes on metal. Where can I, like, what, what do I need? He's like, yeah, sure, follow me. And he just gave me the product I needed. So as I'm sitting here now, <laughs> I've got some some metal filler and I, I don't, I should have had the name of the product in front of me. I will have it down below in the show notes, but it's like a tube of, it's almost like cookie dough and it's an epoxy. So it's not a liquid. It's like an epoxy, almost like clay. Actually, that's, that's more of the consistency. It's like clay. So you take a little bit out, you knead it in your fingers and kind of get, you know, those two materials well mixed. And so now you've got this clay, this putty in your hands, and you can fill the holes. And within an hour, it dries, you can sand it, and you can paint right over it. And it can be used indoor or outdoors. So if you have a piece of furniture that has holes, or, you know, let's say you've got, I don't know if this would actually work, but let's say you've got a hole in a piece of metal, maybe it was caused by rust. I wonder if you could actually use this product to kind of fill that area to fill it out so that you could then paint over it and make it look like it didn't have a hole? Possibly. I would try it. <laughs> but I'll leave a link down below for you so you can check that out. So right now, I haven't actually sanded it. I did get a little bit of time today. And I put as much of the putty as I could into just 
you know, one of the cabinets. That's like my test one. <laughs> so I'm hoping that by tomorrow, maybe I'll get to sand it down and then do another little coat of paint so that it all just hopefully looks as like, just like a new cabinet. <laughs> we'll see. But that's pretty much the process. I really didn't think that it was going to be as, um, you know, as easy as it's been. But I am a little worried about sanding down this this metal filler, hoping that it sands as smooth as I can get I can get it. I mean, I guess it beats having a hole in your metal, right? So we'll see. But anyway, it's going to look really good. And I think what I'm going to do on the inside is I'm going to do maybe um, I've got some really pretty wallpaper that I ordered about a year ago that I never used. How many times has that happened to you, right? Like you order something that's just amazing and you just don't use it. But it's fun when you finally get the idea for the product or the project that you want to use it for. So I've got this really pretty removable wallpaper and I'm I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that it's got enough stickiness to it that I can line the drawers of these cabinets because I think it would just look so beautiful and maybe even do the sides too. So that's what I'm hoping to do. And I really thought that I would have it done this week. And then I thought, oh, I'll get all this time on the weekend, but things have been so busy. My son, my, my youngest son had a birthday party yesterday. And then today I was sitting down trying to sit, get all of my tax stuff into the system for my tax guy. And you know how that is. That's just a nightmare. Um, and also something exciting is going on this week, guys. Let me tell you. So one of the moms from the elementary school that I knew back from when my oldest son was in elementary school, she does casting. She's a casting agent or casting director. She's in that world. And she had sent me an email. I guess it was probably about three weeks ago. And she said, hey, I think this this is something that you'd qualify for, you know, if you're interested, send them your information. So it was a casting call for a shoot that's taking place in Baltimore this week. And the client, I don't know if I'm even able to say that, but basically the client was looking for people between the ages of 25 and 40. Now I'm 45, <laughs> but people have said, I look like I'm in my thirties. So I said, I'm going to send my headshot. I'll send some video clips, some pictures that I've done for the blog with me in the pictures, and we'll see what they say, right? So they want someone that's got, they were looking for four people, two professionals and two DIYers. And I was actually picked as one of the professionals. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, what? Oh my gosh. So I'm going to dress up in the clothes that I would wear to a construction site, right? Like when I go to Habitat for Humanity and I'm working on a construction site, I'm going to be having my picture taken with this product that the uh, company, it's a home improvement company and they make like insulation, like insulation foam. And I'm going to be getting my picture taken and I'm going to be shooting uh, Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. So three days of this week. And so that's why I was so close to just saying, you know, I don't think I'm going to do my podcast today. I just really need to get to bed. I got to get up at five o'clock, drive to Baltimore, make sure I know where I'm going, you know, be in the right frame of mind. I don't want puffy under eye bags, <laughs> but I was like, you know what? No, my podcast, I got to go. We got to talk about these amazing cabinets and how to remove rust. I really want to talk about this. So I showed up today, but anyway, if you do have some metal cabinets, if you have metal furniture and it's got some light rust, you can easily paint over that. Just make sure that you're using the right products, going through the steps, the preparation, so that you get the best results and it's not going to continue to rust. And if it does continue to rust, it could flake off your paint and you don't want that to happen. So definitely make sure that you're dissolving the rust, that you are then using a metal primer, either a clean or dirty metal primer, and then using, you know, whichever paint that you want. But again, if it's going outdoors, make sure that you're using like a, a, a rust stops. I think it's called, no, stops rust. That's the brand of the Rust-Oleum. Use that kind of spray paint if you're painting outdoors. If it's indoors, you can use a furniture paint right over top of the metal primer and it seems to be sticking just fine. No problems. All right, guys, that's what I have for you this week. Next week, I've got actually, you know, I've actually got some some interviews coming up, some really cool things 
that I'm going to be talking to some people about that live locally here in the, in the Maryland area. We're going to be talking about how to use some uncommon materials in order to be creative, right? Like cardboard, uh, nails, screws, all kinds of things, things that maybe some people might even think is garbage to create art. So I've got an interview coming up with a man who lives locally. His name's Todd to talk about some cool things that he's done around the DC area. And I'm hoping that I can get someone on who's a friend of mine to talk about how to make sure that you are not the victim of a scam. She was scammed out of thousands of dollars from someone that she met online. And when she and I were talking, she was telling me about scams that happen where people can actually lose the title to their house. And I thought, this can't, this can't possibly happen. Like, what are we doing to ensure that this doesn't happen to us? But it's a real scam. So she's going to come on. I got to wait. I, I'm hoping to hear back from her. I got to wait to hear when we're going to set this up, but that's coming up soon. And we're going to talk about how to not become a victim of a scam. And I'll tell you about some scams. One in particular, <laughs> they almost got me. They almost got me, but they didn't. <laughs> and I can't wait to tell you about that. All right, guys, enjoy your week. I will come back again next week with another great video. Remember, you can find me at thriftdiving.com. If you want blogs uh, on how to do projects step by step, you can go to my YouTube channel, Thrift Diving. Find me on Instagram at Thrift Diving. And remember, you can always send me an email and let me know what you think about this episode or any episode. I love hearing from you. So it doesn't feel like I'm speaking into a black hole, <laughs> that my voice is actually carrying on to your ears. That makes me very happy. All right. I will see you next episode. Diving. Find it ugly, make it pretty. Mm. Paint the power tools, all right. Saving money with those thrift vibes. Hey, yeah. thrift. Diving. Mm -mm. Find it ugly.